Hi everyone. Uh, we'll make a start now. Um, just to, to to sort of make a point to note that um, if any of your colleagues who have registered um, for the session today haven't been able to make it for whatever reason, um, then the session is being recorded and the the links and the the video content will be sent out to everybody who um, hasn't made it. So just to to let people know that if they've registered and they haven't made it that they can still get a, a recording of the, the session. So if we make a start then. So thank you everyone for, for joining us today for our CEC webinar on the Future Skills Questionnaire. Um, my name is Peter McKinney. I'm the a consultant um, deliverer for, for Compass um, Plus and for CEC. And I lead on the, the virtual delivery program that we, we have. Um, joining me today, I've got Francis, um, who is our customer content manager, and also Mark Davies, who is head of careers and destinations at Cleveland School. Um, uh, Francis, Mark, if you would like to, would you like to turn your camera on, just say a, a quick hi to everyone. Hi, everybody. So, yeah, I'm Francis. I will be looking after the Q&A. So if you've got any questions throughout the webinar, I'll pop them in the Q&A and I'll do my very best to answer them for you. And I'll be sharing things in the chat. So um, help centre articles and then links to other training um, resources and at the end, a link to our feedback form. So, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, Francis. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name's Mark. I'm from Cleveland School in North Somerset near Bristol. Uh, we've been using uh, Future Skills Questionnaire for the last 12 months or so. Uh, I'm going to share what we found from our um, questionnaires last year later on in the show. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Francis. Uh, OK, so if I can run through our uh, agenda and sort of learning outcomes for today for everybody, so we're going to um, look at the, the value of future skills questionnaire. If you haven't already accessed this, um, we will show you the, the different questionnaire types that you can access, how you can prepare um, to deliver the, the future skills questionnaire, mainly to be able to get the most back from it and to get the most uptake um, from, from generation of questionnaire links to sending out to then actually getting that information back. So we'll give you um, some hints and tips around that as well. Then I'll go into a, a live demo. I will I will go through my demo account, show you how to access them, uh, the, the questionnaires, where you can find them, and then also how we can generate the links, send them out, and what we can then do with the data. Hopefully that will also then be backed up uh, with, with Mark and his um, experience of using uh, Future Skills Questionnaire. Um, it will be a very authentic voice, which will be always, it's always nice to hear um, that authenticity uh, when we are delivering these sessions as well. And then like Francis also just alluded to there, I will cover off um, in addition to what Francis puts in in links, where you can find extra resources, training and next steps should you need it um, whilst using um, Compass Plus. Okay, so learn an objective. So we're hoping by the end of the session that you will know how to access the, the correct questionnaires for your, for your learners. Um, know and understand the power of the, the data that comes from the FSQ. So it's a very much a data-driven tool that will allow you to really uh, bespoke and individualize your careers program for your uh, for your learners at your school. And then finally there, again, just to reiterate, where to, to get the help and the resources that you need to be as effective as possible when you're when you're using the, the, the system. Okay, so I will just, I'll turn my camera off. And then that will allow everybody to see the, the full screen. So starting at the start, uh, Future Skills Questionnaire, it's, it's a tool that helps you measure um, readiness for your pupils, your learners within your careers program. It's designed to be a benchmark tool that you would run in order to see where you can uh, improve if, if required or if needed your, your careers program and really give it that individualized approach to the the feedback that you're getting from your from your learners and really then um create a, a great individualized careers program for for each of your learners so the information that you get back from it allows you to reflect on on their learner voice and their their true interpretation of what they perceive to be their careers program so a really really powerful tool that can be utilized uh, uh however you see fit 
Okay, so value. Um, this is a very important slide. I think you know a lot of people will say, "Well, why should I use FSQ? Why should we um spend the time and effort uh completing it?" So, a few of the the different areas could be it it will allow you to or provide you with information to um go to you know a senior leadership team governors where you are needing maybe extra resource, whether that be in the form of time or whether that be in the form of um budget money that type of thing to put on extra activities if you've got the information from the fsq that backs up why you're asking for these particular things then it gives you a lot more power to be able to hopefully negotiate and, and get the um the answers that you need in in terms of extra resource and time it can allow you to um, tailor your uh, careers program to to meet the individual needs um which is a real real big it, it's it's very helpful towards achieving benchmark three, um, which is about having that individual approach to, to learners and their, their careers program. It allows you to, to measure the readiness of, of um, each of your learners in terms of their understanding and their next steps for, for their careers as well. It can support you with also um, careers conversations. So if you are planning activities for learners, and you naturally get some sort of pushback, why are we doing this? Then it allows you to be able to say, as a result of the feedback that we've got from the questionnaires, there seems to be gaps in knowledge or, or understanding. And therefore, these are the activities that we are providing to, to address that as well. So in terms of the value, it's multifaceted and it allows you to, to really um, critique and, and provide the best careers program uh, for your learners. And in order to do that, you may need to be um, consultant, governors, SLT, that type of thing. So it also gives you some um, power to be able to have those negotiations as well. So with the different types of questionnaires that we've got, um, so we've got the four, I suppose you could call mainstream curriculum questionnaires, which are your normal key stage, year 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 and 13. Then we've also got the, the send version. Now, this is a, um, the same across all year groups. OK, so um, it, it's, it doesn't change in terms of its wording and its terminology. However, it is designed to be um, uh, delivered as part of a careers conversation. So done on a one to one basis, whether that be with a careers leader, careers advisor within school or if it's a parent, a carer at home. It's designed so that you complete this with these learners on a one to one basis. For the other four, they are broadly, the questions are broadly the same. Um, they do start to change as you move through your key stages with your learners. But those the, the difference in questions there are then based on the, the position they're at within their careers program. So if they're moving on to choosing their options, slightly few different questions there. If they are then at the end of year 11 and, and what are they going to do next? Slightly different game there. And then similarly for 12 and 13 with university apprenticeships, whatever it may be. So they do slightly change, but broadly they remain the same. With all of the questionnaire types, within the questionnaires, there are two sets of questions. One are around the career ready skills that um that your learners will be developing throughout their uh their career um at school, and then also the essential skills for, for life and work as well. So it's split into two sections, which we will we will have a look at. Um, but those are the, the five different questionnaire types. It probably is a, a good point to note here that certainly with the send version, we always um, advise that you decide, you use your professional judgment on which questionnaire you feel that your learners will be most appropriate in, in being able to answer. So you may have some send learners who um, will be able to answer the, the or complete the, the mainstream curriculum style questionnaires. If that's the case, absolutely fine. Go ahead, send that out to them. If you've also got some send learners that you feel wouldn't, be even suitable for the send version equally don't don't force the situation and just use your professional judgment on that area there so just a, a point to note that you don't just because it's a, a send version doesn't mean that your send learners have to complete that they can then also complete some of the the, the mainstream ones as well if you feel they will be capable Okay, so a little bit of information on, on FSQ and its generation. So FSQ links the generator within Compass Plus. You need to be um, on Compass Plus to be able to, to generate those links. Any links that are sent out um, to, to students can be done via Compass Plus um, as uh, sent out straight away once the links are generated. Alternatively, you can then use Mail Merge. Depending on your sort of uh, proficiency, you may need help or support with, from IT with that side of things. Um, but the, the links can be generated from um, Compass Plus and sent direct out to, to your learners. 
any uncompleted links that you sent out will either expire or be deleted um, on the 1st of August of each year. So if your learner hasn't accessed their emails to, to access the link to be able to complete the questionnaire, um, that will then be, uh, will be, it will expire and that will be it for, for that academic year. And then you could start again in the following academic year. All of the questions that the, the learners do receive on the questionnaires, they're fixed. They can't be edited. You can't um, delete questions. You can't add questions in. Um, but the questionnaires have been designed, you know, with industry experts, with teachers, with consultant pupils as well, or learners. And the, the questions have been designed to, in order to get the most um, useful and powerful information back so that as careers leads, you can then make any alterations, any interventions to your careers program as you see fit. And then finally, the, the, the questions, um, once the answers do come in, they do populate into your, um, your Compass Plus and they then allow you to start analysing that data. What they don't do is um, if you're doing your Compass evaluations um, uh, termly, then they don't impact on that uh, in terms of uh, altering your uh, achievement towards Gatsby Benchmark. So they don't, they, they, they just give you the information to be able to, to really focus on your careers programme. So this, this slide here is really important, and it's all about, in, in terms of getting the, the questionnaires completed from your learners and the uptake on questionnaires, it's all about the preparation. So in, in terms of setting things up correctly so that you get the, the best from the questionnaires, what we first say is to make sure that all of the, the emails within your um, Compass Plus system are whitelisted and that the careers and enterprise.co.uk is whitelisted because that is the email that when the, the links are sent out, the, the, the questionnaires come from. In addition to that, it's very important as much as Compass Plus updates overnight from your MIS system and it will just pull through all of the information that's in there. It's very, very important that all of the student data, in particular the emails, are accurate and that they are not parent emails. Um, so if links are getting sent out to parent emails and for whatever reason parents don't, don't have access to that email, then that uh, questionnaire will just sit there. It won't get answered. That will then sort of skew your sort of results in terms of take up and completion. So very, very important that all um, emails are whitelisted. Uh, with your your plan, have a plan as to how you're going to roll this out uh, in terms of uh, are you just going to start with one year group? May you just start with a, a form group? Um, but have a plan in place so that you know that when you do roll this out, maybe it's as a, um, a a school initiative, that everything's working and that you should get your um, completion rates quite high. On the third step there, we there is an option to be able to... Um, uh, individualize your presentations. You can put school school logos on there to give that again that author, author authenticity and that sort of school feel, so that and um, when it does uh, get sent out, that your um, learners understand that it's from their their own school and not necessarily the the careers and enterprise company. And then lastly, if IT is ever going to fail you, it's going to fail you at a time when you don't want to. So if you're planning to maybe uh, run through the uh, uh, a session to to prepare for for FSQ, and you send the links out at nine o'clock in the morning to for a session at nine thirty. There's a good chance that half of those emails um, and and links will land in the student the, the learners' inboxes and half won't, uh, leaving you in a little bit of a, a predicament. So what we always advise is that if you send them out twenty four hours a minimum of twenty four hours in advance, then there is a very very good um, a high take up that the all of the emails should make it through to um the the learners and they should then be able to access them in your sessions that you've got planned and like we've got at the bottom there we, we've noticed and we've had feedback that um the the completion rates and the take-up rates have been a lot higher when the the setup and the preparation has been uh, more thorough and everybody knows what is happening and why it's happening as well uh, examples of how you can deliver this as well. So um, you could deliver the FSQ within IT lessons. If you have access to an IT suite, you could do it in drop down days um, and you could build it into pl uh, partner platform lessons that you may have where you're doing activities um, on Unifrog, Morrisby, et cetera. You could build it into that as well. You could have it as, like I mentioned before, a one-to-one -one session um, with a with a send pupil, um, and you could then um, uh, complete it that way, or you could alternatively set it up um, as a as a homework exercise or or independent study, 
Um, but this is obviously then um, with the, the proviso that um, learners have access to IT at home, et cetera. So um, the, the links are accessible uh, from all sort of um, IT platforms. So you could, do, you could access it from mobiles, you could access it from laptops, tablets, computers. So the accessibility um, in terms of uh, FSQ is, is very high. So hopefully there shouldn't be a problem um, when you are uh, wanting learners to complete the, the questionnaire. Okay, so if I move into my demo now, and hopefully everybody can then see my demo account. So what we've got here is this will be hopefully familiar to, to people. This is your, your dashboard, your landing page for, for Compass Plus. You've got your information here on your um, Gatsby benchmarks. And what we will look at is where we can access the, the questionnaires from, generate the links, send them out to our learners. And then once the information or once the, learn, the questionnaires have been completed, where we can then analyze the data from. So in order to um, create our links, we just drop into our navigation bar on the left-hand side, click the learner, and then we've got questionnaire. So if we click in our questionnaire tab, what we get is this landing page here. Now, if we work systematically from the, the bottom at the top to the bottom, beg your pardon, we, we can see different links, different hyperlinks. Now on here, we have got a, a little section clicked here where it can take us to uh, extra information that will allow us to um, prepare and plan and give information to those that need it about what uh, Future Skills questionnaire is. So if I go on to the learner guide to start with, this is a PowerPoint that is within Compass Plus that you can use that will allow you to share the information with your learners in a, in a session. Um, it could be in a, um, just waiting for that to load. Um, it could be within a, a sector, a form class, et cetera. And it doesn't take long. It's only six slides long. Up here at the top, this is where we talked about the individualizing and the, the questionnaires with your own school logo. So that would be maybe a, um, a point to, uh, to take on board. Um, but the first slide here, so we can talk to the, the learners about what the Future Skills Questionnaire is, um, why they will be completing the questionnaire, what you're going to, uh, what the responses will be used for, what you're going to do with them. Then it will allow you to talk about the two separate parts within the questionnaire, so the careers, knowledge and skills section, and then also the skills for life and work. And then the final slide is a little bit about how they um, will need to answer the questions. In total, it's also got it in here that it will only take 10, 15, maybe 20 to push minutes for the learners to complete the questionnaire. So it's not a very onerous task um, and it won't take too long. So it could be completed within um, within sessions in, in school. We've also then got um, a, a send guide, which you can access. So down the bottom here, it's a, a PDF that could be printed out. Now, this again will be used in a one to one conversation and you could access the, the link, scroll through it here and it would allow you to talk about the questions that the um, the learner needs to answer, the, the type of information that it's looking for. And it will allow you to really set the scene. So when you do access the link, the learner has got an understanding of, of what it is that they are doing. So we've got that one there. Um, and then our final one here is just a parent guide. So you may get from time to time some parents, carers um, that are very, very involved in their sons and daughters' uh, careers, education, and their, their next steps and their progression. And what this can do, it, it's just a, a short piece of narrative that can be copy and pasted into an email or into a letter sent out to, to the parents and, parents and carers, and it allows them to understand what their sons and daughter are doing in terms of the questionnaire, um, what information they need. It also clarifies that Compass Plus is, is GDPR uh, compliant. So there is no worry that their, their sons or daughters information will be um, will be shared inadvertently outside of Compass Plus. So we, we've got that piece of information there, which gives you some guidance on what you can do and how you can share things. We've then got the, the different questionnaire types here. So we've got our start and secondary transition from key stage three. GCSE years, post-16 study, and send. I'll just quickly click in the, the first one here, starting secondary, just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Again, this is the customizable part at the top. Um, if we click get started, this is what it will look like when the learners access the, the questionnaires. 
So they can then start clicking through. What we've got are four responses here. The top two are classed as uh, negative responses and the bottom two are classed as positive. So when you're analyzing the data that comes back from the questionnaires and it says students or learners um, have answered 54% um, of the questions positively, it means that they have selected one of these bottom two. When it says negatively, this is where it's uh, got the information from that. So all the learn uh, learners do is just select which one they feel is appropriate and then work their way through the questionnaire. Once they've completed the first one, it'll then move on to the essential skills for life and work, and they'll do exactly the same again there. So to access um, from, from your point of view, the, the question is to make sure you send out the correct ones. This is where we can go for, for that information. Okay, so in terms of generation of links, we are now down to our four tabs here. So we've got generate and manage questionnaire links, summary report, detail, and send. If we stay with our first tab here, so we've got generate and manage our questionnaire links. So we've got 23, 24 for our, our academic year. So we're working on our current data. If I then say I want to um, send out some questionnaires to, to my year 10s, I would select the year 10, generate new links, and then it takes us to a separate um, screen. What it does now is <clears throat> it almost puts a fail safe or a safeguard in to make sure that we are sending the right questionnaire out. So within our year 10, we would obviously have year 10 send um, learners and also our uh, mainstream curriculum. So depending on which questionnaire you want to send out, it automatically defaults to the only two that you could send for your year 10 learners. So if we just click our GCSE years, now if you wanted to um, send links out uh, directly as soon as you've had them generated, we'll just tick this little box here, send links via email. And then if we were wanting to send links out to all of our year 10s, we would just select this box here, scroll down to the bottom, and then we will click generate and send links. What Compass Plus will then do is generate links individually for each of these learners and send it direct to the information that it's pulled through from your MIS system. So this is where we were saying about the importance of information being whitelisted and being up to date and correct. Because once um, the links are generated and you send them via email, this is what it will do. I don't want to do that. I just want to generate a, a few links for purposes today. Um, so if I unclick that and then I unclick this and just say, I'm going to gen, I would like to generate a, um, a questionnaire link for Jonathan Allen. So I've just selected Jonathan there. Just to let you know as well, all this information is dummy data. Um, so it's just used for the purposes of our webinar. So none of this um, data is actual real data. So if I then scroll down to the bottom, I'll notice it just says now generate link and not generate link and send. So if I click on generate link, uh, Compass Plus will now let me know that it's generating the link for, for Jonathan. And it will then obviously tell me when that is done as well. Okay, so that's that one done. What I can now see is that Jonathan Allen now has a questionnaire link attached to his name and his profile. And this link here is bespoke to Jonathan. Uh, no two links are the same. So there, there should be no confusion as to if you were doing it in a uh, in a classroom setting as, as a group, the uh, learners are completing just their questionnaire. So what we could do now is one of two things. We could copy the link um onto a onto a clipboard and then um, pour, put it into uh, an email and send it direct to jonathan and say there should be a, a questionnaire link in your inbox could you please access it and then um complete the questionnaire and feed it back what we can also do is if we click on our actions box here we could download links and then if i've obviously only got the one for for jonathan for this year seven if i selected jonathan's what this will then do is that it will download the CV, uh, the, the link to an Excel spreadsheet. Now, if I'd selected all of my year 10s, all of their information will be in here and I can then do whatever I need to in terms of copy and paste and links into to emails, um, that type of thing. So you can then filter a little bit further, maybe it's a little bit quicker than what you can in Compass Plus when you're using the, the spreadsheet there as well. So you can do that with, with your learners. Um, if I then just come back off this, so what we would notice is that if I generated uh, uh, a lot more links, if I generate some more even just as uh, um, to show how it would look, if I then did for um, Jeremy, Leila and Zoe and did exactly the same again, generate links. What you may want to do sometimes if you are doing this for the first time 
is is do sort of a, a small practice run with maybe it's just a, either a form group or one or two uh, learners that you know are actively engaged and they will access their emails and complete the questionnaires just to make sure that everything works fine, that the links go through okay, and that they can, can access them and complete them. So what we can see now again there, we've got just another three links for these other learners. They're all individual. And what we can do is again, download it to a, uh, a spreadsheet, and then we could send it out via email that way. Or alternatively, we can copy and paste it from, from this section here. So in terms of generating links, that's how we do it. Just whichever year group you wanted to. Um, and then you could um, click on either the mainstream curriculum version or the send version as well. Moving along to our second tab here in our summary report. So this is where we can then start looking at the information that's coming back from our learners as they've completed their questionnaires. So we've got a breakdown here across the top of our different um, stages within school. So we've got start and secondary Key Stage 3, um, GCC Years and Post 16 Study. This information here is looking at the Korean Knowledge and Skills um, part of the questionnaire, but you've also got the Essential Skills for Life and Work, and you'll notice the information changes. And at the moment, it's just highlighting the, the questions in chronological order. This part at the top, um, this allows us to see how many questionnaires have been completed and in what reflection of this is uh, from our total year group. So we can see that 104 learners have completed the questionnaires and this is 87% representative of all of the links that were generated for our year sevens. So we've got uh, only a, a small amount still to complete. What the next part tells us is that of our year sevens, 52% of our learners have answered questions in a positive manner. So where I was saying before, on the, on the, the four-part answer, you've got the two bottom parts were the positive area. And then this now gives us a breakdown of how each question was answered, either positively or negatively, from our year sevens. And what we can see is that we've got a bit of a mixed bag and it's sort of a little bit all over the place. Something that we can then do is if we filter one to positive responses, what um, Compass Plus will then do is it will start ranking our questions in the order they've been answered from positive to negative. And whilst I always feel it's really nice to know where you were doing things well and where, where learners are um, gaining a, a good careers provision, the importance would be the areas that we are maybe um, weaker in or need a little bit more development in. And this can allow you to, to really now start to individualize your careers program based on the results that you're getting from the, the future skills questionnaire. So if I just hovered over the bottom one here, question five says, have you thought about how jobs and careers may change in the future? So we've got 84% of our year sevens have got no idea or they haven't thought about how careers and jobs may change. This could then be our first intervention. We may say, right, let's put some um, little careers fairs on early in the, the in the academic year for year sevens to, to allow them to understand what careers um, are going to be in front of them. And hopefully for not obviously our current year sevens, but our future year sevens, by doing things like that, we may be able to reduce the way that this question's answered and hopefully have it the other way around where it's 84% positive and 16 negative. The, the theme continue, continues exactly the same throughout uh, the rest of this um, screen here. So this is then just your key stage three uh, GCC years. You can then filter between the different year groups that this, is, this relates to. Um, but the information broadly remains the same in the, in the way that it's presented. Our second tab up the top allows us to really drill down into the third tab, sorry, uh, drill down into the specifics of what each, uh, what each learner is experiencing in terms of their careers program. So we've still got the same information across the top. 104 questionnaires have been answered, 87% representative of our year sevens and 52% is our average positive score. But where we can now really start dr drilling down into the specifics and really uh, be spoken and individualized in our program is we can click on these bar charts and see who these particular learners are. So we've got eight of our learners have answered questions most positively. We've got a mixed bag, which is 92 percent, um, so 92 learners. And then where we may need to have a, an area of concern is with our four learners here. So four of our learners have answered less than a third of the questions positively. And if we just click onto that bar chart, it will now give us a breakdown of who these four learners are. Now, this gives us the opportunity to start having maybe one-to-one -one conversations with these learners. 
this is also the place where we can start to uh, make interventions to hopefully stop some of our learners becoming neat, uh, that type of thing, because we can address the needs that they are obviously act um, actively um, showing through the, the questionnaire answers and really start making um, changes to, to the program for them. It may be that we create custom groups for any areas that are, are really low, but it allows us to really drill down into the specifics of what our learners are perceiving to be their knowledge and understanding of their careers program. So a really real, really strong part of um, FSQ to allow us to, to drill down into to that data. And then our last part here, this allows us to then look at our characteristics. So we can start with looking at the, the, the way that the questions are answered. We can then compare different groups. We can compare gender, pupil premium, et cetera. And then we can also filter onto other characteristics as well. So all our boys, our girls, pupil premium, that type of thing. So what we could do is we, we just want to know what the, the split is in terms of how our boys and our girls in year seven are answering the questions. And what we may find here is if there's a large disparity between the way some of the boys are answering questions to, to the girls, it may be that we then start looking at putting on specific um, sessions or activities for, for girls or for boys. It may be that um, the, the girls are saying that they don't feel as confident when they are um, describing themselves or promote themselves in, in an interview. So you may bring in um, female entrepreneurs, that type of thing. To, to allow them to, to get that authentic voice from industry, which can then maybe help them uh, moving forward as well. We could then potentially look to just see how our girls are answering questions. We could select on our girls and then say, right, okay, which questions are the girls answering? Um, uh, are they struggling with? Are they saying that they have no knowledge on? We can filter on it that way. And then we can look again, hover over the questions to see what they are. So this section here really allows us to explore the the, the characteristics of our learners and how they are then answering the questions. And it may be able to allow you to um, see if there's any trends within the way the questions are getting answered from particular characteristics. And again, put on um, specific activities, make interventions to your program to allow those things to change in the future. So this is how we can analyze the, the data that's coming back from the questionnaires. Lastly, the send report looks exactly the same um, as the summary in the detail. The only difference or the only change is that where we had the different questionnaire types before, this questionnaire, the send questionnaire, is the same for all, all year groups, uh, all key stages. So all we may then do is just sort of filter down into the particular key stage. Um, in terms of, of data, we can see then that this still um, stays the same. You can still select on the, the different learners that are within these sections. But in terms of the way that you analyze the data, it will be no different to your mainstream curriculum. The only thing that changes is the, the key stage as the questionnaire is the same throughout all year groups. But you can then still analyze the data in exactly the same way. OK, so that's how we generate the links, send them out and then look at the, the, the data. What we will do now is if I can just come back to our questionnaire. If I can introduce Mark, Mark, if you would, I'll turn my camera on as well. If you would like to um, talk us through now what you've done and how you've done it within within your school and hopefully um, give some uh, suggestions to everybody as well as to, to what they can do as well or, or expect. Okay, Pete, thank you very much for that. Um, if you can just move on to the next slide, please. I, Absolutely. I'll um, so just a, a quick little preamble, really. Uh, the results that we're going to talk through are uh, our results from last year, from 22, uh, 23. Um, we've had a few issues at school uh, at the beginning of the new academic year. Um, some issues you may have seen on the, the national news. So we've got 22 classrooms closed at the moment, which are impacted on our ability to uh, use IT rooms and so on. So we're still to launch, really, our new um FSQ for this year. So the data and information we'll talk through is really from those that we gathered from last year. Um, a lot of it really kind of resonates from what Pete has been saying there for the last half now in terms of when to use the information, how to produce the information to deliver it, and then to actually analyze the data and information. So let's go through really uh, year by year. And last year we've really focused on year seven, 11, uh, nine, sorry, seven, nine, 11 and 13, so that we were hitting each of those four different 
transition stages. With year seven, uh, we started at the very beginning of the year. We thought it'd be quite useful for our students to join us um, uh, um, in the school just to find out where they were in terms of their uh, careers understanding um, uh, and confidence really moving forward. So it's a real good benchmark that we could therefore work on as the year progressed. Uh, with year nine, we're focused more specifically around their options process and the success of that and what should it's learned from that process. Similarly with year 11, um, in terms of moving forward, as they start looking at post-16 options, uh, just ensuring that they've, they've picked up the information and guidance we hope that they have. And again, with year 13 is looking at their um, move to post-18 destinations and pathways. So the majority of the, the different year groups we did at the very beginning of the year, so year seven, 11 and 13, we did those at the beginning of term one last year. We've been able to do year 13 again this year, literally today, and I'll go into more details about that later, but we've just been able to do our first FSQ for the year um, this morning with our year 13s. Year nine, we did slightly later in the year, um, as I said, around that option period. So once they've actually gone through, identified their GC options for the following year, we wanted to, to capture that information from them just in terms of the process they've been through and the support they've been given to see how much um, it's been helpful to, to them. In terms of the method of delivery, it's really been quite fair. And that's one of the good things about FSQ. You're not kind of stipulated uh, to one specific area. So with year seven, for example, we use their IT lessons at the very beginning of the year group when they're just finding out how to use the IT systems and so on. Uh, we built a one session um, within that program around FSQ. So I can introduce myself uh, as a school's careers lead and obviously to support and offer uh, and that how it would kind of progress as they move through school. With year nine, uh, we have a, an interesting kind of cover system that's really, really effectively. We've got a very large um, kind of computer suite where students will, will, will use that when the members of staff are away and so on. So I would take groups out of those uh, to another IT uh, area there and I would deliver a session with them looking around uh, careers and again the support that is on, off, on offer to them. Um, with year 11 uh, we, we use specific lessons for those uh, to again to try and maximise maximize their time and minimise the impacts on their curriculum time. And with year 13, we have a designated session once a fortnight where we look at careers, destinations, um, CIG, uh, citizenship and so on. So we use that um, as, a, as a vehicle there. So it just shows a kind of variety of that. I've speaking to colleagues as well the last few days about using FSQ last year and they had other alternatives as well. So they might do, do an initial presentation, for example, in school, but then set that as a, on a homework task, as it were, by sending home the links via their school emails uh, or another time in the school day as well. So it's lots of a, a variety and it's very, very flexible alongside that. Um, to make it worthwhile, obviously, you know, rather than doing the, the 15 minutes or so, uh, as Pete had alluded to, which is about the, the length of time it does take to deliver the actual FSQ part, we really try to build up so that the students have a, a greater framework to work around. So we use uh, Career Pilot, which is uh, an educational careers platform mainly based in the southwest here. Uh, other ones do uh, are available across the country. So Unifrog, for example, possibly people might use, or Zello or Growfile, so on. So we're just introduced for some of the younger year groups in particular in terms of these um, career platforms. And they were able to log on, create accounts and have that kind of connection between that. And then we would move on to do the actual future skills questionnaire. So they can understand the kind of uh, interconnected and continuity within that. Um, but in terms of, again, yeah, in terms of sharing that information, we did it slightly differently and I've, I've put my hands up here and I do apologise for Pete, I've, I've, maybe it's not the right way forward. Uh, but with the IT systems, we kind of made sure that the links were sent to the students quite late rather than the 24 hour notice to avoid them appearing in their kind of school inboxes too early and students having to go at the, um, the questionnaires. It's very easily accessible through the email links there. We wanted to make sure that students had the right guidance and understanding before they actually then went ahead and did the uh, FSQ themselves. So we kind of left it to last minute. In fact, we launched it through the first part of the session where we'd be focusing on the, the career pilot or alternative platform, as it were. So give a bit of background there. Thank you, Pete. So in terms of what that all actual looks like, uh, these are the results we had for last year, as you can see there. So those, those four year groups from year seven, nine, 11, and 13 and hopefully you can see it's quite pleasing to see actually the, the progression that we've made from the the younger year groups in key shades three right through to key shades five 
Um, really easy to understand, um, as, as Peter again has mentioned there, in terms of breaking down and analysing the data available. It's very, very um, user friendly and you can mix around and look at different uh, formats and different groups and so on. So that works really well. Uh, for example, in terms of launching it for some year groups, as I mentioned there, year 11 as a year 13, it would be for the whole year group. So we would send a link to all year groups for others, for example, um, with year seven, where it's particular IT lessons, then we could send it out to that individual IT group. So in terms of actually breaking it down, that works very well. And then the groups you can see there, that's where the results there, uh, hopefully very graphical, very easy to understand. One uh, anomaly, which I'm sure you've, you've probably noticed there, we came okay, as a bit of a shock to me as well when we first saw these last year. Question number nine there, where we had zero confidence, nobody understood what, what anything about uh, question nine as it was for key stage three, um, and then question 10 for um, uh, GCSE and uh, sixth form as well. It's the same question, um, but Unlike the other questions where you're looking at kind of scale, it's basically asking students for that particular question, different types of careers that they may have considered. So it's really a tick box exercise just in terms of things they might consider in the future. So it's not something that they can really show on this form of kind of analysing their results and so on. Uh, and this year, I know this is actually on Pete's uh, set of demo before, question nine, for those observant people who noticed there, question nine has actually been omitted from the results page and not to skew your results at all. Question nine, although it's still there as a question, when it actually comes to show the results, as you can see there, it's not actually on that results page anymore. Um, obviously, when we get those results, lots of different things we can do with those. So I'm just going to focus on one thing in particular there is in terms of making significant or using that information to, to actually uh, make improvements during the course of the year. Um, because we do launch them at the beginning of the year. And I've highlighted two really there. So that first question there, which is question seven, that's around trustworthy career websites. So basically websites that students could use um, that came out quite low in confidence. And then the other one, as you can see, there's a kind of question 11, as it were, for key shades three or question 13 for, for GC. That's really looking in terms of post 16 alternative uh, courses, pathways and so on, so particular T levels, apprenticeships, vocational courses, that came out on our results is quite low. So our next step is to think, okay, so we've identified this as, as an area of development. So what we can do about that? And on the next slide there, Pete, thank you. Uh, this is some of the things that we therefore built into the rest of our um, program. So the first one there is in terms of those websites, we identify this and put a, a dedicated page on our internet system. So we use something, not we don't put too much on our website itself, our school website, it's all, more the internet, which only our own students, uh, families and staff can really access that. Lots of information about different career websites we put on there. We also made sure that in terms of our information evenings, uh, which we do online. So one thing that we've carried forward from COVID there, we continue actually with online uh, information or parents evenings, if you like, subject evenings there, uh, which we have uh, a session as well. So I'll talk a little bit there about the various different forms of resources and online support that families can gather. Um, and then in tutor time as well, when we do career-based activities in tutor time, it's also highlighted there. Then in terms of obviously the, the post-11 or post-16 options there, in terms of T-levels, apprenticeships and vocational courses like BTEX, some of the things that we therefore developed last year really is making sure that we invited more apprenticeship providers uh, in the uh, independent training providers and colleges in to talk about those different pathways that students can take uh, through parts of our curriculum so key chase three which is citizenship and uh, kind of like drop down enrichment days for, for year 11 there we also made sure that we run a post uh, 16 providers week during the spring term in term three, we made sure we made a real balance of those people that came in there in terms of apprenticeship providers and ITPs particularly. Uh, and then finally, in terms of, again, the apprenticeships uh, with our careers fair that we run in the autumn there, we make sure, again, there's a very good show uh, of exhibitors there with those different pathways and also offer parents the chance alongside the, the general careers fair, as you, as you were, to actually have workshops that they could sign up to with apprenticeship providers, ITV, uh, ITPs, and so on. And all of that works really well in terms of obviously the new uh, provider access legislation that was introduced in January there, making sure that the key chase three, key chase four, and key chase five all have a minimum of two um, exposures or experiences there with, with uh, post-16 providers and so on. Thanks, Pete.
So finally, then for me, really, in terms of analysing data, just, just a few things that we've noticed as a school, particularly last year. The first one is, is don't be alarmed uh, by some of the results. Uh, I gave the example there, that first one that came out quite low in terms of students understanding uh, or being aware of trustworthy career websites. Bear in mind that most of the lessons we delivered uh, as part of those sessions, we actually in, uh, included Career Pilot before that. Career Pilot itself is a very trustworthy career website. And yet when it came to answering the question a few minutes later, students have forgotten what that website might look like. So there will be anomalies uh, within your results uh, to, to be taken aboard really there. It's also really important to make sure that we use the, the data from future, uh, from the FSQ there, uh, in line with other forms of um, an analysis as well. So for example, with Compass Plus, it's great when we're filling out our Compass Plus three times a year in terms of the benchmarks and, and we looking at our uh, provision against those benchmarks. That shows in terms of a school, what we're offering to students, what we find if the SF FSQ actually shows what students understand from that offer. So the provision is there, how and what they actually gain and understand from that offer. So I think it works very well uh, together there. That's important. Another point that a lot of schools have mentioned to, to myself in the past when we talked about the FSQ is in terms of it's the chance possibly to run sessions at the beginning and the end of the year and to be able to make that comparison. I think it's quite important to understand that the, the FSQ is actually more of a, a benchmarking tool and it's not necessarily, necessarily there to see in year progress, but just to see where students are at the beginning of the year so that you can then adapt your programme, uh, move forward or, or your curriculum as well. Uh, and then the following year, a year on, uh, when the students in a similar kind of mindset, you know, if it's 12 months on perfect, uh, to see and make that comparison. If you do one at the beginning of the year in September and where students are at that point uh, in terms of fatigue and everything else compared with, say, uh, June or July, you know, you might get a very different set of results if you did it twice in one year there. Um, there in terms of getting into, in terms of interest, uh, introducing FSQ at the beginning of the, the year, as I mentioned there, and it can come at different point, points through the year, but I think where you can, you know, if it can be at the beginning of the year, it does allow you to make that then um, adjustment for the rest of the year as well. In terms of the data, as we again, we've mentioned that already, it's really useful to break that down into whether it's actual individual groups, whether it's pupil premium, gender, SEND, and so on. Really good comparison there. Um, it works, works, works really well. And also when you come to sharing data, policy, if you have a meeting with your governors or SLT, for example, and you're trying to show the progress that's being made or needs to be made and the extra, extra support, provision, and capacity that as careers teams you may need, you know, you can really lead with this information data, um, because obviously these particular groups, whether it's gender, PP or whatever it might be, you know, are really high on all schools' agendas there. So you can really kind of reinforce that message there. Um, also in terms of individual students as well. So for example, with year 11, year 13, where you're looking at possibly with your career advisors and, and deliver those one-to-one -one personal guidance for Gatsby Benchmark 8, you can really break down the information and find out those areas of weakness for students and work on those uh, with the students when you meet them. Uh, which is a real a real strong benefit as well. Uh, and also, you know, conversely, you know, use it as a celebration because as you go through the year, and as we've noticed from year seven to year 13, so that progressive careers learning pathway and journey that students go on, it's really pleasing to see the progress the students have made and identify the, the strength uh, uh, within that programme as well. And that's about it for me. I hope that's OK, Pete. Uh, but yeah, yeah, any other questions, absolutely. please feel free to ask. Thank you so much, Mark. Yeah, that it's really lovely to, to get that authentic voice and to, to see how you've used it. Um, and then to hopefully back up some of the things that I've already mentioned. Um, but yeah, please feel free if there's any questions to, to pop them in the group chat for for, for Francis and Mark, and we could we'll get round to, to answering those as well. So brilliant. Thank you very much, Mark. Okay, so our next part, or I suppose almost our last part, is where I mentioned about resources and training. So what I will do, I will jump into uh, the, the demo account to show you where you can um, access the, the help articles and, and, and webinars and also the, the self-service online training. Um, what we always do uh, at um, CEC is if you are having problems, we always try to direct um, uh, users to the help center. It, it's it's a tool whereby learning is is or doing through learning through doing and the more you use it the the more proficient you get at it um so if you are having any problems when you're using compass plus when you're using future skills questionnaire 
your first port of call should always be the the help center. Um, again, the, there's lots of useful narratives and articles and uh, YouTube clips on here to help you with any of the the problems, the queries, the concerns that you're having. And it's it's very very simple to use. So we've got this left hand section here or this left hand bar where we've got a lot of hyperlinks on getting started, FSQ, PAL, different things like that. If you, you can't find what you're looking for instantly there, you can always type it in up the, in the, the search box at the top here. Um, so if, for example, uh, we just said FSQ, we type hit enter, and then it will bring up all of the, the different articles that link to, to FSQ that are held within the, the help center. So um, really, really important to, to, to visit this page as, as often as you possibly can if you are having any, um, any troubles or any problems. In, in the, the middle section here, so in terms of webinars, we've got all of the, the previous webinars that, we, uh, that we've that we run. Like I mentioned earlier, this one has been recorded. It will be uploaded. It will also be shared with everybody that had registered to attend the session, even if you haven't made it. So if you um, wanted to look at previous webinars, you could always access through here. You can also sign up for future, future webinars. So where today we've looked at FSQ, we do with the webinars on evaluations, adding activities to your plan, using your career partner section correctly and, and effectively. So you can always get your um, the webinars and, and information from in there as well. Uh, training opportunities. So if we clicked into the view training, this takes you to a separate screen. Um, there are a couple of um, self-paced learning modules within, within this section. And what uh, that allows you to do is then work your way through Compass Plus, gaining your skills and your proficiency whilst doing that. Take a quiz at the end. You will get a certificate to say that you, you know, you have a good foundation knowledge of, of how to use Compass Plus and you will hopefully uh, be more competent at the end of it than you were at the start of it. Um, so we've got our self-paced learning in there, and um, we've also got the, the extra resources, the, the directory here. This has um, resources to help you with your benchmarks and creating activities and, and giving you really um, great, helpful hints and tips on, on what you can do to allow you to um, uh, put in place a, a great careers program. And then finally, uh, we've got the, the enterprise coordinators and hub support. So you 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 all have your ECs and, and it's great to sort of lean on them and, and reach out to them if you are struggling and they can always give you advice and support. They can put you in touch with, with other schools that are um, doing things in a certain way in terms of using Compass Plus and, and they can help you to um, identify how you can embed Compass Plus into your careers provision in the in the best way possible. So that is our um, resources and training section there. Um, what we will now do, if I just turn my camera back on, we will go to um, Francis and see how um, the, the questions have been going, if there's anything outstanding. Whilst we're doing that, could I ask everybody, if Francis hasn't already put a link in the, the chat, um, to uh, access the, the QR code there that's on the screen and, and leave us any feedback from today's session it's always great uh, for us to get feedback from yourselves when you're on the, these webinars and these sessions so that we can then ensure that moving forward, we always provide the, the best um, provision and service for you so that everybody gets the most out of it. So any feedback is always great. And Francis, how are we looking? Are we up to date? Are we anything outstanding? No, we're up to date, which is marvellous uh, news. However, yeah. um, I don't think people could access the chat. So um, there we are. Um, but everybody will get a, um, as you've already said, everybody will get um, a link to the recording. So the feedback, the link to the feedback form will be in there as well. Um, uh, we have we have actually got a question here um, from Margot. Thank you very much. It says, can I preview the questions to decide whether the send version is right for a student? Absolutely. Yeah. Do you, I'll, if I go back into um, my demo account, I can show you. So in terms of, so if I go learner questionnaire, it was in the, the help section. Um, you can also look at the, the question, the, the questionnaire itself. So you could, Margo, you could click into the, the send version and it will take you to the, the questionnaire itself and you can work your way through it and identify, is this um, what I need to use? Or alternatively, if we click in this sort of here um, hyperlink, 
it will then take us to this screen here. And what we can do is we can scroll down and you can either view it online, which is what we just did there, or you can download it as a PDF. And what it will do is this can be obviously, uh, you can print this out. It will allow you to see the um, question options in terms of answers, and then it will go through the questions as well. So it will go through them and then allow you to say, right, these are the possible options um, in terms of answering the questions. And these are what the questions are. So what you may do is you may well print that out. And this could be a part of the, the plan and the preparation. You may print it out, sit down and go through this with the with the learner um, and then complete the, the questionnaire online afterwards. But yeah, that is what you could do there for, for, for that one. Anything else, Francis? I hope that answered that. Marvellous. Thank you. Very useful tool. So uh, that was just a bit of feedback there. Yes. So that's perfect. Um, yeah, we're all up together with the Q&A. So there isn't anything outstanding. Perfect. OK. Um, thank you very much for your time, everyone. That That's everything. I hope the, the session was, was useful and you found it beneficial. Um, it is a lot to go through in such a short space of time. Um, and what we do always encourage is that you um use compass plus as much as you possibly can and again um gain your confidence in using the system um but yeah we we uh thank you very much for, for your attendance and um hope to see you in the future thanks very much thank you francis and thank you mark um very much appreciated thanks everyone